Hello everyone, welcome to today's No FOMO Charts Crypto and Stocks TA Charts video. Today is August 2nd, 2024, just after 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome everybody, this is a swing trading, position trading, and investing charts education video. I'm No FOMO Charts, I'm on YouTube X and TradingView. Let's start off with crypto and the news. The crypto market was affected by stock market earnings downside volatility this week. The Ethereum ETF launch was overshadowed by stock market volatility. USA Bitcoin conference speeches were unable to rally consumer sentiment at this time. And the USA government moved approximately $2 billion of Bitcoin to their Coinbase wallet, hopefully just for custody purposes. Now jumping into the charts. Total, big sell-off, big sell-off. Remember last week I said there's approximately a 50% chance of a head and shoulders happening, and it actually happened. So that's why I try to keep an open mind. I have two targets, right? We hit the bottom side target almost perfectly, 2.14 trillion. I shorted crypto because what did I see? I saw hesitation in the market the past week. We are we were not going higher in 2.4 trillion. We actually double topped on the wick. And this resistance actually became true. Stock market has severe sell-off and we crash back down. So we'll see it crash back negative 6.75%. If it keeps going another negative 6%, approximately take us back down to about 2 trillion. So that's the second downside target. I want to make it clear that in this particular case, patience is the key. If I'm a long, I don't buy this hammer. I mean, excuse me, I don't buy this candle. Excuse me, I should make that very clear. If I am along, I do not buy single candles like this because that's called a falling knife in Wall Street terms, chart terms. Maybe if it was a hammer down here, maybe I would consider buying that. But if you look at a weekly chart, it turned into an evening star pattern, and that is bad. So I shorted the market as soon as I recognized that that this week is not going well, it's probably going down. Yes, the RSI is neutral and the MACD is building that momentum, but the shorter term, the medium term time frames is what got us. If we short term Fibonacci, it is in the relative 618 for the past 30 days, July. And the uh, RSI is getting to the oversold level, but I wanna see a big, big setup. Not a really small setup like I'm kind of seeing right now. Too close to the moving averages. We might have a bounce up in the day trading. But uh, if the stock market continues to crash next week, we could pull back harder. But if it happens to uptrend reverse, then I'm going to have to close my short. Bitcoin as well. You can see it clear on the Bitcoin chart, the double top. So total had that potential head and shoulders. Now, Bitcoin had a clear double top. That's why I shorted Bitcoin. You can see it right here on the charts. We did not hit second target. We had this double top and then I shorted because the momentum is lost. We went down that 6%. The second target was actually 8%, which is about $60,000 Bitcoin. So that's the second target to the downside. Pop open some indicators like a pivot. We lost the pivot point as well. RSI at about 40, MACD Cross below the signal line, we're losing that momentum for about a week or two. Four hour charts for the swing traders, again, the bullish divergence is building, but it's not there yet. I need to see a capitulation oversold super crash on the price like we had in the past. If I'm considering maybe a long and close out my short, so if I'm trying to long Bitcoin, I need to see a big wick down here and then try to catch that wick just for that quick trade, the swing trade. Or if I'm more conservative, again, wait for a clear, clearer level of support, upside down and shoulder, double bottom, uptrend reversal, V-shaped recovery, although those are more like day trading setups. So again, on the weekly chart, we had the evening star pattern on Bitcoin. This triple candle pattern, if you know what this is, is bearish. So there's probably going to be some kind of day trading bullish attempt bounce and if it fails then we're probably going to go down lower in the medium term it really depends on the global volatility but like i said 
it's not even right at 200 EMA on the daily, which is about 59,500. And we could poke below that as well, the price. So you could see how far the second pivot is. 55 or 60 is the downside target for Bitcoin. Let's go to Ethereum. Ethereum's a slightly different setup. We had a lower high. We had a resistance at 3,500, basically 3,600. We didn't go above that lower high, crashed, lower high. It did not rally, so then I shorted. Everyone knows, lower high, short. If it breaks out, long, right? You can see the triangle, the descending triangle. We tried to test it. We almost had, we had so many false starts. We almost had the bullish break. It happened one, two, three. This is the fourth time, basically, Ethereum, maybe even the fifth time. So the fifth time Ethereum tried to rally in three months and it's just a fail right now. The momentum is fading. All those Bitcoin speeches and the Ethereum ETF launch, it's too late. The price is too high. Price is too high. For example, if we had Ethereum ETF launch one year ago, so August 2023, where was the price? Way down here. Ethereum was like 1700 If we had it two years ago, that would have been the perfect spot to have Ethereum ETF launch when the price was lower, right? This last rally was because Bitcoin ETF and the price is too high now. So Ethereum, this applies to a lot of cryptos. The price is just relatively kind of too high right now for the entire market to keep going. So $4,000, the big resistance on top, 2,800 is the lower support. You can see we're in this middle half line parallel channel and we're approaching the bottom side. So we're probably gonna retest like 2,900 area. The RSI needs to get oversold again. Four hours getting there, the four hour down cross on the death cross EMAs and we're not seeing a bullish divergence. I'm not seeing it yet or a double bottom. So that's why I'm just letting Ethereum crash. Just let it crash wherever it's gonna go to and then close it out when I see a setup. All right, last one for now, the long one setup of the charts. So Binance coin hit, had a head and shoulders and the break of that was approximately 6% the downside. Next target, 536, secondary big target, 498. So I'm looking at these two spots down here, the blue circle. We, again, if you don't wanna think of it as head and shoulders because it was too close to EMAs, like I was saying last week, just lower high. Resistance on the 236, sell off. Weekly as well, the price is so high right now. If you zoom out, Binance coin, we went from an upside down head and shoulders one year ago, basically to a like a V top, I'm going to call it, right? Or a symmetrical triangle fail breakdown and then lower high, right? This can be some really dirty head and shoulders type of psychology. It's not a perfect pattern. So that downside is like 494, maybe in 453. And again, I want to see a big, some some kind of big pattern. That's the way to have a higher percent win rate than trying to capture every single candle, which is the lowest win rate. So I need to see something, multiple double bottoms, multiple wicks, three, four retests. This is just one red candle. So it could even flip the other way, right? If stocks have an amazing week, it could flip the other way too. So that's why it's just, I never really want to make a move on one single candle and used to have several candles. Give us rapid fire the rest and then move on. Solana basically had a resistance at 185, pulling back all the way to the 100 EMA, 153. Second target, 138 or 127. And again, I need to see, this is just one candle. It can crash all the way down. Bollinger Band, maybe somewhere in the 140s, we might have a bounce if it gets down there. XRP, slightly different. A lot of resistance at 66 cents. 66, 65. So then the lower area of the support is about 45. Stuck between here, we had almost an even star pattern on the chart. So the midpoint is about 50 cents. See if it's going to hold that or not. It definitely has to stay above 50 cents. Dogecoin, we almost had an upside down head and shoulders, but it failed. We had a lower high rejection on this resistance channel on the upside, top side. So 14 cent rejection, crash back down correlation. Now, it's still possible to have this upside down hidden shoulders, but I need to see the reversal, okay? Just because you have this one red candle, 
not good enough for me. I want to see a hammer candle. I want to see something reversing. Either at 11 cents, we must hold 10 cents. If we have a breakout above 13 again, that's a risky spot. So I like 11 to 10 cents area. It's still fading. Look at long-term downtrend, low high, low high. It could crash way down to like seven cents. So just be aware. Same thing with Cardano. You draw one trend line on the top like that. Erase this. One trend line on the top. It's already downtrending anyways. It's downtrending. Death cross. That's all you need to know. Death cross, number one. Death cross, number two. Resistance rejection. We are not establishing higher lows. Low high, lower low. So 35 cents support, 32 cents. If it crashes way down here to like 25 again, that's where we started almost before the Bitcoin rally. So Cardano is getting crushed. A lot of altcoins getting crushed. So this is a good time to just remind people that when something starts downtrending hard, an investor wants to stay away from that. When it starts downtrending and not recovering, a trader is going to try to Shorter term trader, medium term, is going to try to trade the support to the resistance, support to the resistance, and then just, you have to get out of there if you're a trader, or protect your capital, stop loss. For example, education right here. If I happen to buy the bottom of this, or maybe not even the bottom, and I had a big stop loss, 10%, let's pretend I bought at this X. And if the coin goes up 30%, don't just leave the stop loss down here. We got to manage risk. I'm talking to myself right now or fictitious trader and move the stop loss up to lock in 25 to 20% profit, right? And then it would have stopped out. This is the capitulation stop loss order crush. All of this. We had it, once we had that retest, we're going to crash down. It's not going higher for now. But the upside down head and shoulder is there. It's potential. So I'm just staring at this zone, 33 cents. Shibu Inu in a clear downtrend, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, is underway. We're approaching a double bottom resistance zone, a long time support level from uh, 2023 on the trend line. So we need to test 1400. We are still in a death cross. It's not good. Not good. Shibu Inu has to rally a lot to have an up cross, uptrend reversal. So it's not good, right? Not looking good for Shib. 1400 to down to 1200 is the support level. Watch that closely. Link, this head and shoulders actually became true. It's not capitulation crash yet. Just understand that if it happens, this is a weekly chart, by the way, it could crash 50% plus. So it could go all the way back down to 580 or $5, $4. If we lose this $9 support area, it's barely holding on to the 200 EMA at 1150. Okay, let's move on to stocks. Thank you for watching that. If you like something about this video, you learned something about this video, hit that like button, click subscribe, and let's always try to manage risk if you're a trader. Welcome to the stock segments, April 2nd, 2024, Friday night here in the USA. Stock market volatility on earnings, just incredible downside volatility, bears completely in control, excuse me, Bears completely in control right now. Stocks, earnings releases coming up this week. Tyson, Palantir, Caterpillar, Uber, Fidelity, Yum, Brands, Hyatt, Amgen, Rivian, Meme Name, Reddit, Airbnb. I mean, Uber and Lyft, they're kind of beaten down right now, so I'm going to watch those. SMCI, CBS Health, Disney's a big one, Shopify, Occidental Petroleum, Robinhood, Zillow, Eli Lilly, especially because they had the 10x rally, Gilead, just to name a few, space. So it's going to be a, not as volatile as this past week, but these individual names can move a lot. USA Economic Data Releases, Services PMI, Crude Oil Inventories, 10 year, 30 year bond auction, unemployment claims, FOMC member speeches as well, and the news from last week. So, the USA FOMC held, holds interest rates steady during the July meeting a few days ago. Possible September interest rate cut if the economic data in totality is good. They're monitoring it very carefully. Now for earnings, it was mixed earnings. The only really good tech earnings was Meta, 
out of this batch, Meta reported better than expecting earnings results for both revenue and profit. So the stock kind of held. NVIDIA is holding a little bit right now. It has a capitulation crash. Microsoft beat expectations for EPS revenue, but they missed their cloud revenue target. So had a bit of a pullback. Apple beat expectations for EPS and revenue. However, iPhone sales declined yearly and we have a shooting star on that stock on the candlestick. Amazon re missed revenue target due to reduced consumer spending. And we had a gap down which is a hammer. Intel missed both EPS and revenue expectations, announced layoffs, suspended the dividend, weaker guidance forecasts, and the stock crashed negative 27% in one day. That's the worst crash for Intel in 50 years. So when we go to stocks, you can see the lower high, right? Almost this head and shoulders as well. So we lost that neckline if it's a head and shoulders. Where's the big downside target, 4% to the downside? This crash might not be over, although we're hammer bouncing off of the 100 EMA. So the first target, 520 for uh, support on the bottom side. 500 is the second support. But if we happen to fill up the gap to the top side, four, excuse me, 539 can be the top side target. So 539 resistance, 550 resistance, 520 support, 502 support. As a long-term investor, you can see we lost the trend line in blue, lower high, lower lows, downtrend. Now let's just double check. The bullish divergence is building. It's not, it's barely out of the Bollinger Band and the pivot point, the next pivot point down is 527. So I can imagine next week, some, some shorts are going to try to push it down. And if the bulls say enough's enough, um, at some point we might have a reversal that I'm watching out for. The weekly candle as well. The big warning sign, if you go way back to July 8th, was we're sticking out of this Bollinger Band double top that's outside of the second deviation of Bollinger Band on the top side. The weekly chart that signals a overbought condition. The bearish momentum was forming. We had that one spot. There's one week to get in there and short this market down. Now, I'm not seeing any reversal yet or anything, so the weekly is forming its higher low, and the weekly uptrend is at risk right now. NASDAQ, more clear chart. You had in the yellow the big trend line loss and the lower, low, lower highs. We almost had a support bounce here that surprised like NVIDIA 12% pop, which got immediately reversed for two days. So we lost 457 support, and now we're testing the 618 zone. Uh, 446 of this entire three months Fibonacci sequence. So I'm looking at low, high, maybe a lower low test of 433 to about 443. And then I want to see some kind of uptrend reversal if it's going to happen because there is a trend line here. So we need to break through that trend line if you're a bull. If you're a bear, might need to re enter at 456 for one more short to the downside. That's what I'm anticipating. Let's go to this should be Dow Jones. Dow Jones, very clearly, what am I seeing? This is a lesson right here. Double top. Clear double top on the price. Did we go higher? No. So when I saw this shooting star on Wednesday and we had bad earnings, I immediately said, this is a double top. We're not going higher for this week. Short down. So I short it down. Now it's resting hammer on the 50 EMA. So we could bounce up to 403. That's resistance on the top side it would be surprising if we really rally high that that means the whole market has to go up but we're probably consolidating inside of here low high low wherever the lower low is going to be could push down all the way to 391 that morning on monday tuesday and then we're going to try to retest between these ranges on the weekly as well uh, the shooting star in the middle of july hanging man candle last week and then we had the big sell off so there were two weeks of warning signs IWM as well. Two weeks ago, we had a shooting star. Then we had a nice bullish candle, but then we had a double top on the wicks with a huge sell-off on the weekly. The daily, I saw the shooting star. I saw, wait, we're not breaking out of this symmetrical triangle. Short that. Good gains on that, right? In terms of the, the short. Actually, it's even worse, right? So that's why. This could actually be interpreted as a large M. Small M was about 1% and 
we went 6%. It's incredible. We had to realize that we just erased one month of gains in terms of the, the rally on the left side. So just watch out for that. The uh, 206, about $100 and $200. 206 to 200 is the support level to downside. If we Fibonacci this, however, it could be more clear. April to here, or July. We're hovering above over the 50% Fibonacci range. So that's 208. If it bounces to 382, 211. That's how I play the market. DXY was actually interesting that we had a sell off, but it's not entirely impossible. You can see it was in that triangle. We rejected down, lost the lower high. We almost had a rally attempt, but then flushed down to this X target, which is about 103. Now, again, it's just a single candle. How many times have we seen single candles continue to crash, maybe consolidate to the side crash? I need to see a reversal at the bottom here. We're, enter in, we're entering into the left side of the 618. It's not the final spot. So support levels 102.70 to 147 on the downside, resistance 103.68. US oil actually just couldn't hold. You can see in the larger triangle in this blue, resistance and the support line down here, it is losing the relative support level. Looking like it's going to test about 71. I do like the hammer candle, however. We could have a V-shaped recovery. I understand that. So the resistance could be about 75.25. Natural gas continues to just get crushed to the downside. Remember, technical analysis does not always work on US oil and natural gas. So then it's just all momentum plays in terms of the price action. If you're a technical trader, remember, remember I shorted from way back here. And the downside target, if we use Fibonacci levels 1161, until something happens with natural gas fundamentals, it's probably going to continue to crash. I mean, natural gas just loves to crash. Last time this happened top to bottom, was about negative 50% crash. So where are we? We're at negative 40%. Negative 50% would take us down to 1070. So I need to see basically the price go sideways for months. That's not happening right now. We could get another uh, rally relief, dead cap bounce, to maybe about 1525, and then probably it's gonna get sell off again to about $13. All right, gold is the only asset that really rose Except it's getting stuck at resistance, which is a 227 area. So if it happens to you lower high, and let's just say it's inverse correlation with SPY, pull back down to about 219.54. It has to break above 230 for me to get excited about that. Silver. Let's get silver low to high on this breakout. Interesting that silver, let's get rid of these blue lines. Did not quite hit my target of 2450, but we had a reversal here. This is more of an intraday play, it looks like. Death cross still on the four hour, but it looks like possible upside down head and shoulders, but it has to break above 2660 to confirm that. If that happens, we'll go 7%, which is a lot to this target up here, 2850. If we reject down to the downside, probably retesting 25. Copper. This had a clear head and shoulders. We hit this 200 EMA target, so um, that's why this came up on one of my um, one of my um, one of my systems. Is that we're having bullish momentum, bullish divergence, right? So it looks like copper wanting to possibly retest. Hopefully, the market doesn't keep crashing, but you can kind of see it rounding off a little bit down here. Possible support. Holding about 25.50. So I'm actually long copper right now. It's kind of crazy, but uh, trying to just see if we could play a little of the, bit of this bounce right here on copper. So upper resistance could be like uh, 27. If we hold about 25.30, I'm okay. We're okay on copper. But if it happens to crash, I would not be surprised because sometimes we need a super capitulation crash, like it didn't go up outside the Bollinger Band. Then we get super oversold. Then we have a long, a short squeeze. Okay, Microsoft, like I said, Microsoft, 
Once we hit a resistance zone, this is not a random spot. The price, 469, that's not random. It's been a one year trend line. That's why trend lines are extremely important. Sometimes when I do my own analysis, I turn all the indicators off here in the eye. Come down to the eye, turn all the indicators off and just draw two to four lines first. Trend lines, like you see in the yellow and then support and resistance lines. And these are the exact targets that the market is crashing to. It's just trying to top that. You need a little bit of confirmation to short. This is where about where I shorted NVIDIA. The Microsoft, you can see clear low highs, lower lows. And if we use Fibonacci, looks like the 786 zone. Yes. From the May low, if we pull the Fibonacci all the way back to the beginning of this year, that's a yearly Fibonacci, it's in the 618 zone for the year. So that's why um, some algorithms are probably going to start to take some profit on their shorty. And the, the Bollinger Band, let's see. And the indicator's on. It just poked out for the bottom of today. So um, I like, the only thing I like is that it's at the 200 EMA, $404. And if it happens to push up to the top side, 424 could be that top side. I would not be surprised if we get some kind of relief bounce. Now, NVIDIA, let's bring up the gaps tool. This is free from TradingView. And then you could clearly see we have a gap right at 101.33 this blue box and where's the resistance gap right here at 109.20 so you can see clearly we're playing stuck between these two lines nvidia what's the lesson here you could say a weekly double top you can also say a lower high you could say m breakdown there is three spots to short this here's a lesson i shorted the top spot because i happened to catch the top outside of this bollinger band that is very abnormal Usually when that happens, you get a little bit of some kind of pullback. Then the second lesson is resistance breakdown, lower high. That's another entry for a short, according to my criteria and a lot of people's criteria. Then when you have a clear double top and we lose support, this rally was the big warning sign, then short that down as hard as you can. There's some, and then this was unfortunate for some shorts who came in too late. If somebody shorted the way bottom here, that's wrong because that support Wrong spot to enter. Got to enter on a lower high. So when you got the rally, the professionals waited two days and then they, they shorted down. But it looks like we might get a potential double bottom on NVIDIA. If it happens, double bottom spot 104, okay? And if that rallies, that could go back up to 120. But uh, NVIDIA has not revealed their earnings yet. So just understand that for right now, the bears are in control on the downtrend. It's not like it's going up. It's not doing that. It's downtrending right now. So I need to see something very, very powerful on the price for me to do something. Okay, Apple, the risk here is immediately support level, potential head and shoulders on Apple. It's, it's shaky. Sometimes we ride these trend lines up like we've done that in the past in June. But if this is real, this is not good for Apple. It could be 8% to downside. 198 is the second target. 16% to downside if there's a full market crash is 180 back to the earnings, pre-earnings level. Fibonacci from bottom to top. And we could see we're getting stuck right at the 236 level. We just had earnings on uh, Apple. So it's very important that a lot of these trend lines need to hold. So we're just stuck right now between 225. This is the shooting star I'm talking about, by the way. 225 and 216. That's the only two price I need to worry about for right now. It's trying to maintain a lower high, but uh, we'll see what happens. Amazon with the gap down. And how could how could we have predicted this? Well, we could have used gap tool as well. You can see on the gap tool on the bottom side is a huge one, right at 165. So that's a gap fill area where we pull back down. This lower high was tricky because there was a there was a fake out past uh, Wednesday Thursday. There was a potential upside down hitting shoulders double bottom, and that just got destroyed. Then there the very next day. So sometimes earnings, the best thing to do is just stay away. Right, the bigger pattern that I could see that the uh, institution is using is lower low, lower high, bad earnings, lower low. It is outside that Bollinger Band, and 
tested that S2 area. So it could, if this stops crashing, the resistance on top side 175, support at 164. Last two or three, Meta. Now on the weekly chart, even though Meta had good earnings, potential double top, been warning about this for a long time now. Double top potential at below 543. So it's stuck right now. It's stuck. Some might, some might say it's ascending triangle, yes, but understand where do we come from? We came from $100 meta, and we're at $487. This thing went 487%, 500% approximately, right? On the chart, it says it went 400%. So if we lose support at 421, then we have a problem, okay? Because right now it's right. We've seen it happen before. It's subtle, sideways, maybe one more rally or just lower high sideways. That this, so I don't like it going sideways, it's bad. Now it does it easy to put a Fibonacci and look at all these targets to downside over time. So the big trend line has already been lost. We got rejected under twice, under there twice. So just be aware of Meta trying to long this. Even though the, the earnings is good and whatnot, the technical is not good for now until I shouldn't say like that. The long-term technical is just, it's kind of too high. But the very short-term technical is, well, we just bounced off that support and we survived the stock crash. So, okay, I'll give it a chance for a couple more months. Tesla, unfortunately, had the uh, mixed earnings and uh, or kind of bad earnings and, and lower, low, lower, high. Just put up a Fibonacci to understand where we are. Remember, my target was somewhere around two or three to two hundred dollars. It's coming back down to EMA average price right here, the the red and orange lines. So it's about two hundred eight dollars. And if it happens to gap down even further to two hundred or one eighty eight, then we might get some real oversold action. It's not oversold on a daily four hours. Getting there, you can see I can see the turnaround is building. So maybe a retest of like a two oh two two hundred, and then we might get the bullish divergence is forming on the four hour to give it time on Tesla. So my upside target would be 216 once the reversal happens, but I need to see a big green candle. If it doesn't happen, downside targets 202, 200. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it. Just remember, VIX sometimes helps. And so for three months now, we've been riding this $12 VIX price, and we had a, a, a triangle breakout. So there's a warning there. So sometimes VIX is very quiet, and then it explodes with volatility. It's very quiet, and once it breaks above. So on VIX, I would just use trend lines to forecast that. So middle of July is when we got real messy here on the market. All right, everybody, that's going to do it. If you like this video, if you learned something, go ahead and click the like button. Click subscribe. If you have a chart request or a question, just let me know in the comments, and I'll try to check that for next video. Thanks for watching. Remember, risk management, chart setups, and good strategies, and emotional control. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.